Hi there guys, my name is Barry and welcome to episode 5 of One Man and His Boat. In today's episode we're going to be looking uh, at doing the back bulkhead, uh, finishing that off and actually doing some seating. But before we start that, I'd like just to say thank you to everybody that's helped us on our social media platforms. Our last few pictures has reached nearly 13,000 people which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm looking forward to bringing you more videos more updates as soon as we get them from uh, the boat builders themselves about our new Cygnus 21. But before we get started on today's video, I want to know from you guys how exactly you want me to explain our videos. Now, we've been very impressed with the comments that we've had via our social media and via YouTube about uh, our past videos. However, I, I'm getting the feeling that I'm not describing myself enough and I want to know from you guys if you want to know more or you want to know less. So I'm leaving it up, well up to you. And also I would like to apologise for the sound. We've got some chicks in the shed the now and they're going off their head because they're needing fed and it's a reeking gaily wind outside. So without all that out the road, let's get on with today's video. Right, we're at the back of the boat now, uh, we're at this back bulkhead and I'll quickly give you a run through what all happened here. We've, I've already explained this in video 2, however I think for a fresh video we, we need a quick reminisce. So bear with me on the camera work guys. <laughs> right, this is the back bulkhead. What we basically use that for is just putting all your rods and sods in there, nothing um, that's going to take any harm from sea spray or anything like that because it, it's, it's no watertight, it's no watertight at all. We'll have a quick look in here. Now today what I want to talk about it's these little bad boys here, is the way I fitted the top and bottom rails. Now, these uh, top and bottom rails, the last time I refurbished the boat, were in solidly without bolts through, and it was suggested for Jackie Tag, uh, the last owner before me, that uh, it would be easier to take them off so we could actually take the doors off and work on the doors. So this time I've come up with this little idea, which we've got a, a piece on the top with a batten on the front and then bolted right through right right through the bulkhead. However, as you can see, we've got these um, bolts, bolt heads that we can see. Now, the way we actually get rid of these bolt heads is by covering them up. And what we use is called um, plugs. And basically, what you need is a set of plug cutters. Right guys, these are the plug cutters. And what they basically are, is a drill bit that cuts an outside diameter off a piece of wood and leaves you with the inside. Now this set is actually a straight set. Um, what I actually need is tapered. And also, the, the plug cutters that I have here aren't the same size as the hole here. This is 20 millimetres. So this is where I had to go on to, shall we say, a well-known auction site and buy a big bag of these. Now, this is what um, is the plug looks like when it's tapered. Obviously, as you can see, it's smaller on the inside, thicker on the outside. Now, the inside diameter is the 20 millimeter, and the outside is about 23, I think. And it's absolutely perfect for just going in these holes. As you can see, it actually sticks out a wee bit away from the actual batten itself. 
So, for all you that don't know, how do we combat this? Well, first of all, we have to glue the inside edge with some waterproof glue. Then we have to make sure that the grain of the plug is going in the same direction as the grain on the actual batten itself. Then we'll put the plug in nice and tight, get a right shove in or just a, a light tap with a, a rubber mallet or something like that. Leave it to dry for at least overnight and then come back. So, we'll get a bit closer in. So what we can, as close as we can get to uh, the batten of the wood and then sand the rest down. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> uh, sand the rest down flush. And then this piece should be ready for varnishing. Far easier doing it this way than we actually did with my beautiful bulkhead at the front. Yes, it looks fantastic. However, at least three days work there. I mean, that's just, wow. Crazy, crazy. There is this. I bolt all this in an afternoon. So, just goes to show, build first, varnish second. Right lads and lasses, we're going to have a quick look at just what I've just done there the now um, and I'll have a wee uh, explanation about things. So as you've seen in my last clip, we put the glue around the edges, we banged it in with a rubber mallet and we run, getting it to run around with the rag. Now the rag will help spread the glue to seal the, the plug off. Now these plugs are actually sacrificial. Um, if we ever need to get these battens out, we we'll actually have to drill these out uh, just in order to get to the head of the bolt. So, but the bolts are all stainless steel, so I mean, if, if we really, again, okay, everything's all nice and fiberglassed and everything like that. I mean, the only thing that we're going to really need to rework on is more the wood itself when it needs revarnished. Uh, but you never know, you never know, you might have to take it all off. So, and if we do, that's how we do it. Right guys, while we're waiting on that drying, we're going to go on to the rear seat assembly. Now, I've done a lot of these parts when I first got the Barry B, so that was years ago. However, we have got a lot of cleaning up to do before we can actually fit these parts. I'll show you the parts uh, in the next clip. Um, however, we'll uh, have a wee deep see of what I've done here. Excuse me, I hope you don't feel sick with spinning around so fast. Now yes, I know it's a very low seat because there's the top of the gunnel there and there's the, the bottom of the seat there. However, that's the way Orkney made these older boats and it works perfect for, for, for me because I actually put my backside up here and I put my feet on top of the, um, the top of the seat itself. Anyway, this is just a basically a cataloid that needs finished off. I need to get the, the sander onto this and make it all flush and level. Then we need to remarry the, the bits of stainless steel for underneath the seat. We'll bolt that through the hull and then we'll fiberglass on the outside of the hull so the heads of the bolts will not be shown um, and basically the, the, you're able to work on them on the inside of the boat, the bolts themselves. And it's exactly the same this side. But what the trick is, is actually making sure that they are the right level down 
for the, the, the edge of each lip and then the seat is actually sitting level because actually the last time I done this I made it all nice and level but something was wonky and I don't care if it was a back bulkhead or what but it just looked a little bit out of place but we'll do a lot better this time so this is our stainless steel sitting apertures um, I made these years ago uh, when I first got the Barry B so uh, I did remember when I actually made them to label them as you can see, front port side, front hull, ah, there you go, front starboard side, and it's the same with the rear, both sides, port and starboard. Now, one thing I will say about these, these pieces is, the holes are at different angles, not angles, different depths, and that's all because the last time I'd done this, I'd done everything in line and we had a lot of bother fitting the actual seat because the bolts knocked heads with each other. Whereas if you do it this way, that's like 40mm in, that's 20mm in, then the bolts are far enough apart that you can get a, a, a nut in here and then a nut in here. I'll, I'll explain all once we come to actually fit the seat. So here we are at the rear of the boat guys. This is the exact spot that the new stainless steel parts will go. As you can see I've already pre catalogued these and they're needing a good sand down and prepared for um, uh, re-drilling and uh, fibreglassing over. So we'll get on with that. Right guys, now we're going to go on to what we'll actually use to uh, buff everything down to get uh, the next stage done. Uh, here we are. We can use our of a little black and decker uh, grinder or we can use the operable sander. Now this for this kind of fiberglass work for buffing everything up I actually like using this one because with this one it's a bit aggressive. It's okay if you want to take a lot of fiberglass off but if you just want to take it down a layer or two this is not the one to use but it's good as a backup. Uh, and also as you can see by the um, flap disc that's on it, it's a wee bit concave, whereas this, flat as a pancake. Now, this is a hook and loop system, and these are the, the actual sanding discs over here. Now, as you can see, we've got like a PAA, what's that, P1AA, P6A, basically all different types of grades. Now, for the user that don't know what that is, that means how rough the surface is on the outside. The lower the number, the rougher the surface. The higher the number, the, the softer the surface. So this might be good to start with, but then you might have to actually take a few discs off and then come down a few and then go to 180 and do 320 and all that sort of scenario. But most importantly, once you're dealing with fiberglass, you have to wear PPE. I mean, this is a big thing because basically all the hairs that come off uh, from the, the dust with the fiberglass can actually get stuck in your lungs and can do some serious damage. So at saying that, well, I'll have a quick look at my PPE. We've got the ear defense, the glasses, and the mask. Now, the, the filters on this mask is actually uh, meant for fiberglass. So it's, it's quite fine, it st stops letting all the dust in that you get with the fiberglass work. However, with this mask and these goggles, these steam up. So <laughs> it's a case of two scenarios. You take the glasses off to see what you're doing, or you take the mask off to stop the glasses steaming up. It's a case of two worlds, but I personally like wearing the mask and not so much of the goggles. And yes, I know, I really need to get some new PPE, but we'll work on that.
Right guys, as with all boat building, there's always something that's not quite right. And this piece of metal here is not quite at the right angle that I need it at. So what I'm going to do now is actually stick it on my um, metal bender that I've got and make sure uh, get into the right angle. Right, now that all the dust is settled, now we can get on with actually working out our next section for fitting these seats. Now, I'll put, zoom in here. Obviously these need to go on in here like so. Um, and the best way to do that is actually measure from the back bulkhead to the back of where the stainless steel part's going to go. Obviously that's both sides. Then we'll mark the holes uh, on the bottom there and then pre-drill them. Now I'm just only going to pre-drill them with a 2.5mm drill but at the present um, obviously they need to go on up to 10mm but we've got a small problem that I'm going to talk to you about in the next um, clip. Right guys, with all boat building things haven't gone according to plan. My first idea was to use these bolts, how they've got the mushroom head on them. Now, uh, these were taking a lot of faffing about to get them right to actually marry flush. Don't know if you can see there. Marry flush with the plate. So I had a wee brain wave. I thought, we'll go down a go down a bolt size, we'll go down to 8mm. I know these are 10mm holes, but that'll give you a 2mm uh, play about when it comes to actually aligning the pieces of metal, just in case there is um, such a thing. But what I'll do on the outside of the boat for this is actually the cataloy over the top uh, once they're in position and then fiberglass over the top of that. Um, if you look at both bolts there's not much a difference in height in them. Maybe one millimetre more or even that I wouldn't say. So it's not going to make much a difference on the outside of the vessel. So guys just a quick recap of what we're actually going to do. It's a different day for me. Um, Basically life got involved yesterday so I had to sack it and then uh, obviously we're at a new day today. So I don't care if you can see the pigeons. We're having a wee clear out in the shed today. Uh, Farmer Stuart's busy uh, doing fertiliser and stuff like that so it's going to be noisy and in the background so just bear with me. They Right, anyway, so we're going to be fitting the stainless steel cappings at the back here. Those bits right there. And there. And what I forgot to do yesterday, it's a good job it took two days actually, is I actually forgot to measure the height. Uh, and there was a 3mm discrepancy in the, the height of the plate, so maybe that's why it was wonky the last time I actually built the Barry B. Um, also, you, you live and learn, don't you? You live and learn. Right, so anyway, let's get on with this thing, guys. Right, that's all the stuff that we need to actually uh, fit the plates, guys. So we've got our, our bolts ready, our nuts. What I'm going to do is just use um, A4 stainless steel normal uh, nuts, followed up by, uh, unfortunately, A2 nylock, so I've not got any A4, but A2 will have to do. Uh, we've got our extra washers. Also, measuring tape, very important. A series of uh, drill bits. Now, when you're drilling fiberglass, it's like drilling stainless steel. You start off with very small as a pilot, and then you just work bigger and bigger and bigger. 
Then we've got Mr. Seekerflex. Can't go wrong with this bad boy. It sticks to everything, seals everything up. Uh, Bolt builder's best tool, apart from a grinder and a big hammer. <laughs> and then obviously just a normal lay battery drill. So, let's get the tools on. So guys, that's the back end finished. Uh, now we're on to the front end and it's exactly the same scenario. Measure from the front of the bulkhead, measure your height, make sure everything's all lined up, mark your uh, plates, then re-drill and then we're good to go. Screw it, glue it and we'll glaze it. Right guys, here we are. It's all put in place. Finally. Quick squeeze this side. Now we had nothing but bother with it. It was an absolute nightmare. Uh, it wouldn't measure up correctly. We were about five millimetres out one side. It wouldn't level up correctly. So what I've done is done the best of both worlds and I think we're about two and a half millimetres out for one side. So I don't think we are an old boat like this. It was probably the first plug they ever made, so there's maybe a wee discrepancy somewhere along the line. It's done. So we'll get on with the next job, which will be... The bolt heads down here. What we're going to do is cover them in catalloy, smooth it all off so it's nice and flush, and then we're going to put a couple of layers of fiberglass over the top. So guys, how do we make cat alloy? Well, basically all it is is basically a talcum powder mixed with resin and then a wee drop hardener in it. And it's the bee's knees for doing little jobs like this. See, so that is just talcum powder. Right, so here we go. We've got the dry powder in there. And all I want to do is add a little bit of resin Nothing exciting. There we are. And then we mix it up until it's like, I don't know, like dough, like what you make with your bread. There you are. If anybody makes bread anyway, right enough. If it's too dry, you can add more resin. If it's too wet, you can add more powder. But you've got to remember when you put your hardener in, it will get a little bit thinner as well. So then I put too much raisin in.
it's just a matter of taking your time and getting it right and there we go you see that guys just right sticky it's perfect for doing the next stage right guys so what do we need next well we need a spatula something to put the catalogue on the hardener and then obviously our catalogue itself and all we do is just scrape it out and chuck it on the board just like so make a small inkwell and then we've got to work out how much hardener we put in there. This is winter hardener so we need not as much right. on this there's a uh, little numbers on the side of the, the tube here and we're only going to uh, uh, four which is about four, uh, four ounces I think you just add that to your catalog and then give it a good mix up And what will happen here is a chemical reaction and the stuff will just get harder but you want to apply it before it gets too hard Right guys, that's it done uh, we're basically just going to leave it 24 hours and we'll come back and fiberglass well give it a light sand down first then give it a quick fiberglass over uh, and then that'll be that hi there guys right we're on day three for me uh, and we've basically come in and we're going to check the stuff that we done yesterday which is actually the catalogue now the bolts on the outside of the boat but before I show you that go and have a look at this weather come follow me have a look at this, this is just absolutely disgusting out here today. That's a review for this morning. Yeesh. It's been like that all night as well. Uh, in fact, it's actually a lot lighter because the, the rain was tenfold. Anyway, let's go and check our work for yesterday and then we'll see how we get on with there. Here we are. I brought some extra light in because it is dark and boggly in here. So it's not too bad. We'll give that a wee sand down with the orbital sander and then we'll go put a wee layer of um, fiberglass over the top, probably about two sheets of matting. Right guys, I'm nearly ready to start fiberglass now. I have my resin in here, I've got my sheets cut out, I've got the hardener already to rock and roll. We're only going to go to five ounces here uh, because it's actually quite damp today so atmospherics take a lot when you're actually fiberglassing. If the conditions are not right, you need to add extra stuff and uh, basically, you know when it, is, you've got to find a happy medium. You can't have it too soft or else it'll, it'll take forever to set and you can't have it too hard or else it becomes brittle so it's getting the right factors for the right conditions and like I say today in the shed it's quite damp and it's very gloomy uh, obviously you've just seen the weather so right let's get this all put together and let's get it on the boat 
Right guys, we're going to go on to fiberglassing the, uh, the front piece now. Uh, I don't want to go too much into this because I want to do a section on that once the new boat arrives. So, we'll just go with the flow. The basics is, you put a layer of resin on, on where you want to um, put the mat in, give it a couple of minutes, then put the mat near the top and then batter away with the resin on top, then roll it all off. So we'll get on with that then. Right guys, there we go, all done. It's like that on each section where the seats are. Now the reason for this is when um, you put the bolts in, there's nothing for the bolts to grip on the other side. So that's why you put the extra layers of glass on, plus it'll stop any leaks uh, coming in at that bit. And then you start osmosis uh, in fibreglass, that's when water actually penetrates between the fibreglass layers itself. So it'll stop all that as well. So all it needs now, once um, it's all set, which is another, what, 12 hours we'll get it properly, maybe 24, um, is just a light sand, hand sand dune. You don't have to use any equipment um, on it, again, like the orbital sander and that. And that's it, you're good to go. Prep for painting, that's it. So I definitely think that's a wrap for this video then. Right guys, that's your video for this week. Feel free to give it a thumbs up, write a comment below, Please subscribe to our channel and please tick that notification bell. Uh, that'll give you an idea of when our next video out, which won't be long. Until the next time guys, thank you very much. Cheers and out.